A mix of simulation, colony management, and strategy. This isn't just city building games or RTS. Welcome to 10 upcoming PC base building games in 2019 and 2020. Now, this is a genre that lands in the middle ground that appeals to a more specific group of strategy sim gamers. Though, as with any genre today, there are grey areas and crossovers. Today we have 20 games to talk about, and this video is in collaboration with Clemmy Games, an indie games enthusiast, so expect lots of pixel art, isometric views, and hidden gems on his channel. I'll let him introduce himself. Hello, and thank you GamerZuck for the introduction. Like many of you, I'm a fan of base building games simply because I want to see massive cities being built and having to manage the various systems and to have it all working together in perfect unison is such a fulfilling task. Indie games in particular often have novel or unique spins on the formula, which is why I love them so much, and we certainly have some very promising titles for you today. Now, we split the work between two videos, one here and one on his channel, so be sure to check out the next 10 games after this set, and let's get started. Kicking things off, we've got Trolls Cog by Andreas Carlsen. An open-world city builder RTS with economic engine building and tactical battles, this is a unique blend of a base building game where you'll explore a forested fantasy world, secure resources, complete quests, and engage in diplomacy. Visually, it looks decent, blocky, but textured, but not too much of the final gameplay has been implemented or shown off yet. Entering early access in the second half of 2019 and looking at a full release for quarter 2 2020, you can get a good look at Trolls Cog soon and be able to see if it's something you'll like. Now, I'll let Clemmy Games let you know about the next one. Make Your Kingdom is a low poly town builder where you build, expand, and manage the needs of your citizens. It appears that you can zoom in and follow or control individual citizens as well, which is an interesting perspective, and I like the construction animations in particular. Gives me very strong, banished vibes. And then for some castle building with Stronghold Warlords by Firefly Studios. The Stronghold series has had its ups and downs over the years, and this time they're trying to switch things up by going to East Asia. Vietnam, China, Japan, and Mongolia are vying for power with new units, a new warlord system, and a whole new setting. But there is a focus on reintroducing classic mechanics too, with grid-based building, a more economic-focused gameplay, and generally trying to feel like the older Stronghold games. Footage so far has been a little rough, but visual improvements, refinements like unit collision and gameplay mechanic reveals are still on the way. So we'll see what Stronghold Warlords builds up to for its targeted 2020 release. Dwarves, one of fantasy's most beloved and perhaps most stereotyped race, but here we are again with Hammerting, where you have to establish a mining colony deep within the unexplored mountain of Mara. The game's own subtitle is the Vertical Dwarven Mining Colony Sim, and that is the aspect which I picked up upon, since gravity and depth play a role, and mining blocks actually removes them from the world, which eventually should result in some pretty impressive constructions. Colony Sim elements are also present, with each dwarf having their own unique traits, which is affected by things like ancestry and are affected by events as well. The main impetus seems to be to forge and supply weapons and items for your allies in the world above, such as silver swords to be used against vampires, or a crown for the elven princess, so very strong thematically. And then for a new version of an old game, it's The Settlers by Bluebyte. One of the great classics in gaming, Settlers is a base builder where you collect resources, plan and construct resource chains, and expand your territory. But the series has taken some turns. The originals from the 90s are quite different from the more recent ones, and now with the seventh main iteration on the way for the end of 2019, people are wondering whether it'll be more like the older games, the newer ones, or something completely different. Visually, it looks good, maintaining its charming aesthetic, and we can expect a mix of economy, management, and military. Interest was also revived by the release of the History Collection not too long ago. However, I don't think there's a single format of The Settlers that will make everyone happy. Autonauts is perhaps the most factorial-like game on this list, 
since it is about colonizing uninhabited planets with the use of automation and robots. Rather than production lines and conveyor belts, you instead have autonomous robots, but you have to program them using a visual programming language, making them repeat actions in order to learn. From cooking, fishing, building, farming, tailoring, and more, there seems to be so many interlocking systems, which should be a fun challenge. The low poly art and chill vibes also makes this really appealing, and best of all, it should be releasing in autumn 2019. Going up into the sky, we have Airborne Kingdom by The Wandering Band. A colony base building game set floating in the sky. Wander the desert searching for technologies, gathering food and resources, satisfying needs and trying to keep everything afloat. Production chains, trading and multiple play styles are also promised. It looks pretty and the approach to building is kind of new being up in the air and all. Hopefully gameplay in Airborne Kingdom is deep and complex, with room for creativity and progression, otherwise this kind of builder could become a bit stale after a while. Space station builders are an intriguing one conceptually, since how do you even add rooms and modules to a thing floating in space practically? But that aside, Starport Delta requires you to balance between gathering resources, station maintenance, and resident requirements. Interestingly, this uses hex grids and has a system where station upgrades are applied through proximity, so grouping three power plants together will result in a cluster supplying a larger area while requiring less maintenance, which seems like a fun system. For the penultimate entry, it's Evil Genius 2 World Domination by Rebellion. Play a diabolical mastermind as you design your evil lair, meant to be your base of operations for world domination. Take on missions and challenges, set traps for spies and infiltrators, and develop horribly destructive technologies. You can expect something like Dungeon Keeper, but more modern. It's always hard to say how games like this will turn out though. It looks fun, quirky, and unique, but I'm all too familiar with buggy launches and missing features. Aiming for 2020, that's when we should be able to put our evil plans into motion for Evil Genius 2 World Domination. And now I'll let Clemmy take the last game. The Rift Breaker is a base-building survival game with action RPG elements where you play as a scientist commando hybrid in a mech suit and have to establish a base and a portal back to Earth on an alien planet, collecting samples and researching technologies while fending off the alien threat. The base-building seems to be more centred around the construction of a power grid with having to build complex chains of automated mines, refineries and more. This, combined with the wall building and the sheer number of smaller alien creatures, certainly makes it seem like a cross between Factorial and They Are Billions. I really love the look of this, and it is very graphically impressive, and as a bonus as well, if you like tower defense games, their previous title in X Morph Defense is excellent as well. And for one more bonus game, I'm going to mention Knight's Province. This is a game that's been in development for many years, but has some things going for it. It's a slower paced real time strategy game with more of a focus on base building, planning and resource processing. Development updates are regular enough and there's a small but dedicated following for the game. There's no way of knowing when Knight's Province will be completed, but you can check it out for free right now in an alpha state and see if it's something you want to play or check back with later. And that's 10 upcoming base building games for you to look out for. Which ones are you most interested in? Also, here's something I'd like to know. What about base building is your favorite part? Building up from scratch, making things efficient, or that feeling of becoming a dominating force? Don't forget this isn't an exhaustive list though, and 10 more are listed over on the Clemmy Games channel with me there too, so be sure to check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this little collaboration. Clemmy approached me on Twitter with the idea and I thought it'd be nice to do a collab. We don't get many opportunities to do this, so it was a nice change of pace. Also, just so you know, the main six lists I'm doing for this year are well on their way, so if you're hyped for those, I do plan to try and get all six uploaded before December this time. There's still a monumental amount of work, but I've been chipping away at them for months already, and it's always surprising how many new games there are to check out and curate. If the new set aren't up yet, check out the playlist of list videos that I have been making since 2014. Those will be linked on the screen right now, as well as down below in the description and pinned comment. 
along with the other half of this list over on Clemmy's channel. Thanks so much for watching, hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. Like and share the video if you feel like it. And you can also check out all the other bonus links in the description down below. Alright, and I'll see you in the next video.